Okay, we've been given a parabolic motion question where it tells us that a driver drives off the edge of a cliff that is 58 metres high and the police at the scene of the accident note the point of impact is 0 0.136 kilometres from the base of the cliff. What is the car's final velocity? Okay, now, the car's final velocity is going to be broke. To work this out, we have to first find there are two components to his final velocity. There is going to be a horizontal component, velocity horizontal, and a vertical component. Let me just make this a bit nicer. And a vertical component of his velocity. And we're going to get a, this is going to give us a, so we've got the vertical component here, velocity vertical, and this is going to give us a resultant velocity in this direction. So, like, it's pretty um, commonsensical that the car isn't going to crash either straight up and down or straight from the side, it's going to crash at some angle to the horizontal. So this is our resultant velocity here. And we've got to calculate, because they're asking us for velocity in the question, we've got to not only find the magnitude of the velocity, so how fast the guy's going, but we have to find the direction as well. So we're going to have to find also the angle at which he's hitting the ground at. Okay, so... First things first, we're going to convert all of our units to SI units or standard units. The, this distance here, we have to put that into meters. So this is going to equal 136 meters. Okay, great. And that's all the information that we've been given. Now, the first thing that we can calculate is we can calculate the time that this car is going to spend in the air. The way we can do that is because we know that at the point where he flies off the cliff, his vertical velocity is equal to zero. And so as a result, what's going to, we can calculate how long it's going to take gravity to accelerate him 58 meters towards the ground. And that's going to tell us how long he's in the air for. Okay, so... The equation that we're going to use to solve this is S is equal to UT plus one half AT squared with S being our distance, U being our initial velocity, T being the time that he's in the air for and acceleration being acceleration in this case due to gravity. So the distance that the car is traveling in the vertical direction is 58 meters. And the initial velocity we've, we've already established is zero. So zero times time plus one half acceleration is 9.8. And we've got time squared. So because we've got 0 times t, that is going to cancel out. And so we have 58 is equal to 1 half 9.8 t squared. And doing a little bit of simple algebra, we can see that t is going to be equal to the square root of, well, so to get rid of the half, we times both sides by 2, so we're going to have 116 divided by 9.8. And this is equal to 3 3.4387 seconds. Great, so that's that's how long the car is in the air for. So what we can do now 
is we can calculate his horizontal velocity because with parabolic motion, when there, we assume no air resistance, velocity in the horizontal direction is always fixed. So what we can do is we know that he has he covers horizontally 136 meters in 3.4387 seconds. So we can calculate the horizontal velocity by simply dividing distance by time, which is equal to 136 divided by 3.4387. And from that, we get 39.55, worst five ever, meters per second to the negative one. So we can put that in to our little final velocity triangle here. So this is going to be 39.55 meters a second. Great. So the next thing that we have to work out is we've got to work out the vertical velocity at the end point. Now, we know that the initial velocity is zero. We know the time that we have, and we know what the acceleration is. So what we can actually go use is we can use the formula V is equal to U, the initial velocity, plus the acceleration times the time. Because all this is going to be is, let's put the V there, the initial velocity is zero, and then we have the acceleration, which is 9.8, over a time period of about three and a half seconds. And that'll give us the final vertical velocity. So let's enter in what we have. So and that will give us 33.73 meters a second to the negative one. Okay, now we've got all of the component vectors now for our final velocity vector. So we can now just focus exclusively on the vector triangle over here. And the resultant velocity here, we can just use Pythagoras with these two sides because this is a right angle triangle. And we can say the resultant velocity is equal to the square root of 39.55 squared plus 33.73 squared and that is going to give us 51.98 meters per second and so that's the magnitude we've got our magnitude for our final velocity now the last thing we have to calculate is the direction. So we have to calculate this angle theta. Now, we can use the two values, the component vectors that we have got previously, and we can use a little bit of trigonometry and go theta is equal to the inverse of tan or arc tan of opposite 33.73 divided by adjacent 39.55 and that's equal to 40 
0.46 degrees. So, now that we've done all of that, we can write down our final answer for the question. So we can give a definitive answer for the question. We can say what the car's final velocity, so velocity final of the car will be 51.98 meters a second to the negative one at an angle of 40.46 degrees to the horizontal. And that, my friends, is the solution. We, Because they ask for velocity, not just speed, we have to give a magnitude and a direction. And once we've done that, this is the question solved. This is a bit more of a tricky parabolic motion question. But as you can see, if you can understand how to get the final vector triangle and the components, it's all fairly easy from there.